Hi, Ken students. Welcome to a video over using significant figures in calculations. Please have out your notes, something to write with, and today you need a calculator. So addition and subtraction. It says you're going to round your answer so that it has the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the least number of decimal places, so your least precise measurement. So when you're adding and subtracting, it's really important for you to realize you're going to look at decimal places in your number. So here's an example. If you add together 53.984 plus 2.5, the exact answer you're going to get in your calculator is 56.484 before rounding. Okay, and that's just adding a number together. What we need to realize in chemistry is you would be adding together measurements. So the 2.5 is less precise. So in order to give a correct answer, a precise and accurate answer, we have to round to the least precise measurement. So our least precise measurement has one decimal place. Therefore, our answer should have one decimal place. So this is the entire number. Um, and we want to round so it has one decimal place. The 8 is going to round our 4 up to a 5. So our final answer should be recorded as 56.5, since our limiting term 2.5 has only one decimal place. So calculate and round the following to the correct number of significant figures. So I'm going to do a couple of these with you, but then I want to give you the opportunity to try it on your own. So when you add all of these together, the exact number that you get is 616.11. Okay, but that's the exact number. It's not considering that these guys are measurements. So this one has one decimal place, one decimal place, two decimal places, and three decimal places. Well, the least precise one has one decimal place, so I need my answer to have one decimal place. I'm looking, and the digit after one decimal place is just a one, so it's not going to round it up. I'm going to round this to 616.1, and that is it. So if you will please pause the video and try the next three, remember that if something is a five or greater, it's going to round it up, but if it's four or less, it'll round our number down. Okay, welcome back. I've written in the exact numbers, but I want to walk you through how we round these because sometimes kids have an issue with this. Okay, so in our next example right here, I've got 58.5 and 45. Well, 58.5 has one decimal place, 45 has zero decimal places. So my answer needs to have zero decimal places. So the five is gonna round our 13 up to a 14, and that is the final and correct answer. Okay, our next one here, my first measurement has three decimal places, then one decimal place. So my final answer should have one decimal place. So I'm going to record it as 37.6. It just so happened here that the exact number came out with the correct number of significant figures. That's not always going to happen, and most likely it will be a rare case that it does. Okay, here, one decimal place, one decimal place, so my answer needs one decimal place. I realize that it comes out to 20, but it needs one decimal place to be recorded precisely and accurately. So 20.0 is the final answer. So it's important that it has that point zero to show the precision of the measuring device used to make these original measurements. Okay, so just to mess your life up, whenever you're doing multiplication and division, the rules are completely different. So when you're doing addition and subtraction, you look at decimal places. When you do multiplication and division, you look at something completely different. So it says, when you're doing multiplication and division, you round the answer so that it has the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the least number of significant figures. So this time we're looking at the entire number for significant figures. So for example, if we have 4.28 times 8.3, we exactly get 35.524 before rounding. Okay, but 4.28 has three sig figs and 8.3 has two sig figs. So my final answer needs to have two total significant figures. So 35 is significant. I look behind it and it's 0.5, which is going to round this up to 36. 
So my final answer after rounding should be 36. All right, let's go ahead and look at a couple more examples. So I have 5 divided by 2.2. When I do this in my calculator, I get 2.27 repeating. 5 has one significant figure, 2.2 has two significant figures, so I need to round my answer to one significant figure. Final answer is 2. I'm going to do one more example with you, and then I'm going to have you try the rest on your own. Okay, so 52.3 times 8.8 .8 comes out to 460.24. This number has three significant figures, and this number has two. So I want my answer to have two significant figures. Ah, let's think about this. How do I round 460.24 to two significant figures? Does it make any sense for me to write 46? It doesn't. It's important here that my number has the same value. 46 is not the same value as 460 something. So this is what you do. If I put a zero here, 460, how many sig figs is that? It's only two sig figs, unless I put a decimal. So I leave off that decimal. If I put a decimal, that's three significant figures, but leaving off the decimal is only two. So my final answer here is 460 without a decimal. Okay, go ahead and pause the video, and when you come back, I'll walk you through these next two. Okay, welcome back. So right now I have the exact answers, but let's go through how to round properly. 900 divided by 55. I get 16.36 repeating. Well, the number 900 has one significant figure, 55 has two. So I need my answer to have one significant figure. So the six is gonna round the one up to a two. But two is not my answer. 16 point something does not round to two. It doesn't make any sense, but it can round to 20. Okay, so 20 has one significant figure. As long as I don't put a decimal, my quantity is preserved and I have the right amount of significant figures in my answer. Okay, and the next one, I've got 3,650 times 1,000, so I get 3,650,000. This number has one, two, three, four, five significant figures, but this number has one. So I need one significant figure in my answer. The six is gonna round this up, so my final answer is four million. Again, putting no decimal in order to just have one significant figure. Okay, so this concludes my lesson on using significant figures in calculations. It's gonna take you a little bit of practice in order to master this. It's not as hard as it seems right now. I promise when we get to like know, the third six weeks or the second six weeks even, you're going to be like, oh, this is so easy. At first I thought it was really, really hard. I promise you, you'll get much better at it. Just be patient with yourself. You're learning something new. Feel free to raise your hand and ask your teacher for some help. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Good luck. Have a great rest of your day.